What's up guys and welcome back to Gabe Miller Music. Today I'm showing you the making of some drum and bass on the Novation circuit. This is like by far the cleanest, clearest, but also punchiest I've been able to make drum and bass on the circuit. So I wanted to walk you through that process, show off some tricks that I use to get that to sound the way that it does and point you to some sounds. For the prettier, floatier synth sounds, I'm using the pack by Peyton Carter. He's one of my favorite musicians who uses the circuit regularly, an absolute power user and his pack is well worth checking out. For the heavy bass, I'm using my go-to source of circuit heavy bass, a Force Truly Evil. His pack bass pressure is fantastic for that, so I'm using that. And for all of the samples, for instance, the drums and some pad samples that I'm going to talk about in a bit, I'm using my pack, my ultimate one-shot pack, as I'm calling it, available for five bucks. Link is in the description to all three. So thank you so much if you check my sample pack out. But regardless, let's get into the circuit. I'm going to start this off by playing a more full version of the jam that you heard in the intro, and then I will get into the making of it. All right, now diving into the individual elements, let's start off with the drums. Here are the full drums. And first of all, on drum one, I've got both the kick and the snare on the same track. That way they both trigger the side chain. You can hear that in the bass. I'll make that more extreme. That's obviously too much. I will come back to the bass though. Uh, add a open hi-hat and then a closed hi-hat and this is sampled from my model cycles this stuff was all like designed and layered probably over quite a bit of time I don't remember where I got the open hi-hat from and this is all in my five dollar sample pack and then finally the other sample track is a pad sample so let me play all the stuff together This was something I made on a granular synth and it works great just to fill everything out and it really came in clutch here. So a couple of tricks I'm using, if I go into the effects, I can turn this stuff back down. That's the original sample, just looping repeatedly. And the circuit only allows mono samples. So to get some stereo width out of it, bring in a large reverb. And then I don't know if I did it on this one, but A little bit of this uh, slapback ping pong delay works perfectly for that. Bringing some stereo width into an otherwise mono sound. So that is it for all of these samples. And this is pretty much the same throughout the entire track. A couple other things I quickly wanted to mention about the drums that I forgot to include in the original filming session. Uh, first of all, I've got the kick and snare turned down in pitch a little bit, just a little bit of distortion applied and they're shortened ever so slightly. Gives them a bit of extra punch and a bit of extra grit. And then the main thing I wanted to mention, the little trick that I like to use for controlling volumes if multiple drums are stacked onto one track, I went into velocity and changed the velocity of the snare to be quite a bit higher than the kick. That corrects for the volume differences between the kick and the snare, evens them out and lets the snare punch through properly. Up next is the ARP bass. This is a patch from the uh, Force Drew the Evil pack, the bass pressure one. It's nice because it's like the envelope or the LFO or whatever is set up just to be able to hold this down. That changes the speed. 
did not mess with that here. So I just dialed it in until I got this really nice plucky bass. And then once again, I've got a bit of reverb on that, add a bit of space, add a bit more decay to it. And then finally, this patch is from the Peyton Carter pack. And it's got that really nice little repeating pattern. And so I was able to kind of work that into the melody. And then also note, once again, presence of effects. I've got that delay turned up to add some width. And then I've got the reverb turned way up on this one. And that is it for the main drop. Fairly simple and fairly minimalist, which I think really works in this track's favor in this case. Moving on. The dramatic uh, switch up. So very similar drums. Just playing a different pattern. This is another patch from the Force Truly Evil pack absolutely massive. Uh, there's a little bit of reverb on that as well. And then it's a very subtle layer. Octave up. The circuit is absolutely capable of some immense sounds, and this is definitely proof of that. And then this quick little kind of throwaway section, really. This is like a kick drum patch, essentially. A little bit of reverb thrown on there for good measure, and uh, the pad's still going on in the background. Playing this rhythm that really plays well off of the main kick pattern. So let's jump into the other track real quick. This one's fairly simple, but I did want to walk you through it because I think it's fun. So let me break this down into its individual elements. First of all, pretty distorted kick. In this case, I didn't bother bringing them onto the same track, but uh, the snare was actually designed on the model cycles, and then I've shortened it a ton, and then I've distorted both of these elements pretty heavily. And I believe I have some micro steps set up with the kick, so it's doing more of a triplet pattern. It's fitting into that grid. Pretty simple open hi-hat. Also from the model cycles. Getting really into the kind of noisier vibes here. This patch is lots of fun. Also from bass pressure. This is what it does if you just hold it down. So rather than just have a really steady pattern like this. Which does work. Instead, I've gone and chopped it up in effect. And I've also arranged this uh, using micro steps as well. This is an example. I just shifted it forward a little bit, and that was just enough to get me back into that triplet groove. Of course, heavy side chain on that. And then the other track is also fun. This is from the Peyton Carter pack. Just playing that same little art plane over and over. I really love the contrast of this absolutely monstrous bass and this super plinky, pretty lead. I think the contrast between these two elements completely changes the energy of the track, and it simultaneously brings out just how chunky this bass is and takes it to a more chill spot despite being pretty frenetic. And I think that's a really cool vibe.
And I could definitely use that in a breakdown as well if I wanted to. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, if you'd like to check out my $5 sample pack for the circuit and also other stuff, you can hit up the link in the description. And if you'd like to see more drum and bass and more Novation Circuit, you can click or tap up over here somewhere. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.